And then let me share the screen. Okay. Can all of you see the slides? Can you do like a little thumbs up reaction or just say yes or something? Okay. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. So networking and self-awareness, professional presentation. Okay. So we're gonna learn about first impressions, networking, and email etiquette. Let me move this thing over here. Okay, and that little caption, I just thought it was so cute how um, it's like the little doggy at the airport and it says, you will hopefully be better than this dog at networking. Um, yeah. Would you say, for all of you, would, would you say you're good at networking? If I asked you all right now, like on a scale from one to five, how do you feel about your networking skills? Who would say that they're at a one? Who would say that they're at a five? Mm -hmm. Four to five, a three. What about the rest of you? Are you good networkers? Two to three. And some of you might even be wondering, like, what the heck is that? I don't even know what networking is. I don't know what I am as a networker, which is totally, that's fine also. So first impressions. Why is it important to make a good first impression? Or first, I wanna hear from others. What are, what are first impressions? What are first impressions? And why should we care to make a good first impression? Um, I feel like first impressions are basically how you present yourself when you first meet someone. And that can make a huge difference, especially in an interview or, uh, yeah, a networking event as well. They just kind of get a feel for you as a person and that can determine whether or not you get the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And Marco said, creates a, a good relationship. Yeah, it could set you off on the good foot with a good relationship or kind of have you start out as a rocky relationship or might not even lead to a relationship at all. And by relationship, it could be professional relationship, like Leslie mentioned, getting a job. It could be a romantic relationship, like maybe you're on a date with someone or maybe even meeting your in-laws. Like maybe you don't make a good impression with your in-laws and it might take a while for you to win them over. You know, it could be a lot of different things. Um, but making a good impression is important because it's uh, what people decide about you. They already have their set ideas on, on who you are as a person. So um, yes, that is when people take note and decide if they like you or if they want you for a job or not. And the first impression is formed within the first 10 seconds of someone meeting you. So within those 10 seconds, just those 10 short seconds, people decide if you're, if you're trustworthy and they could determine that within one tenth of a second. So within seeing you in one tenth of a second, they could decide if they trust you or not. Then your status. So if you are wearing a name, like a name brand clothing, it could set off an impression that you are, um, at a higher, like a higher state than somebody who's wearing non-designer. Um, like it can make you seem wealthier. Same with your orientation. People decide if you're gay or straight. This is especially true for men um, in less than a second. So within like less than a second, people will automatically impose that on you. It, and that's like faster than how long it takes for someone to recognize a face. Um, they could also see like your intelligence. So they could, they could determine like if they are already like saying, oh, this person's smart or not seeing you as a smart person. Especially if you're wearing, for some reason wearing glasses makes people think others are smarter or the way you're, spe you're speaking to, like you could not be a very intelligent person, but 
if you're using like very eloquent words, you're automatically seen as intelligent or vice versa. Some people are super brilliant, but they don't speak very eloquently. They like to use like slang or talk like how they want to talk, like, you know, how they feel comfortable and they might, they might come off as not smart and also successful. So if you're wearing clothes that fit you, that are tailored to you, you are seen as more successful than if you're wearing clothes that are too tight or too loose. How do you guys feel about this? Any thoughts or comments? Pretty crazy, huh? How quickly somebody can determine your first impression. And I'm sure you also can imply that on other people or impose that on other people. So how do you make a good impression? And again, making a good impression is important because usually when you are trying to make a good impression, it's somebody that you want um, a relationship with. And again, I'm using the term relationship uh, to mean anything professionally, romantically, friendship. Um, I don't know, just different, different ways to form relationships, different kinds of relationship. I'm just using that term um, as in a general sense. But you want to make a good impression to just have a has start off on the right foot and just have a good relationship started with that person. So Again, the way you dress, how you act, and how you walk, so your demeanor, how you carry yourself is a good way to make a good impression. Um, also, the quality of your voice, your grammar, and your confidence. So how you're coming off towards people. A handshake, too, um, which, you know, handshakes are kind of tough, especially right now with people like, you know, right now you're actually probably not meeting new people at this time. And after going through this, pandemic, how is that going to affect handshakes? Are handshakes going to be more like, ooh, I don't know, like, like I know for me as a counselor during flu season, I'm, I tend to shake students' hands, um, but during flu season, I, I don't shake students' hands. Um, or if I feel like I'm getting sick, I'll tell students like, hey, I'm not feeling my best right now. I don't know if I'm getting sick, so I'm just not shaking hands. So, um, but anyways, usually having a strong handshake or an at a time where it's appropriate to have a, a handshake, like if you're getting introduced to someone or if you're going into an interview, having a strong handshake makes a big, a big deal. And then smiling and having um, eye contact with people, having an open body, so not crossing your hands as you're meeting people, being calm, so not coming off as like rushed or having pressed speech or having like a, I don't know, just being very calm. And then practicing. It's always good to practice with others to see how you're coming off and if you are making a good impression. So networking and professionalism. So what is networking? Can you all tell me what networking is? Can somebody tell me or put it in the chat box? What is networking? I guess I've mostly heard networking used in a professional sense. So meeting other people you might be able to connect with professionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, a good one. So meeting people. What else? How would other people have heard it in journalism sense when you interact with people you know, to get sources from people they know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are good definitions. Now, can someone tell me why? Why is networking important? Yeah, it works for jobs also. Opens opportunities. Yeah, has anyone ever like been hooked up with a job by a friend or family member? 
because when you network, you make connections with people who further your career. Yeah, who further your career or even help you like get started on your career. So somebody tell me about a job they got without having to like interview. Like you kind of just like walked in and like you, you were able to get that job because of a friend or a family. I haven't gotten a job where I literally got it because I knew someone, but I've gotten interviews with companies because I knew someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like a two of the jobs that I worked at, um, basically I was referred by a friend. Exactly. Has anybody had an experience like that? I used to work at a bowling alley and knew a bunch of people that worked there. So I got hired on the spot. Yep. Yep. That's a way of networking. I know for me, like my first years in college, like all the jobs I got, like I kept like moving up and I never even had to like interview for them. Like they were kind of just offered to me because they knew me in the community or I worked for somebody they knew. Um, so I never really had an interview because I built those networks, those connections. I know for a lot of students I work with, a lot of times they start interning somewhere like that they've never been before. Like they don't know anybody there. They just start interning or volunteering and then they get to build relationships with people there. So once they get their degrees, they get hired or even before they get their degrees, a lot of times they get jobs offered to them. In the summer, I worked at the same place my dad worked and was able to work for two summers straight at the same place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And networking, a lot of us, so nepotism is a real thing. And nepotism is when sometimes like your, your parent owns like a company or they're like high up in management at a company and you kind of just get that job because of that because like your family um networking is it's a little different because some people might not have relationships in a certain industry or their families aren't in high up positions like that so networking helps you with that it helps you like get to know people and it helps you like to have those opportunities where people are like, oh yeah, I know this person, like I know Marco, like he's excellent. Like you kind of have a foot up over other people that they don't know. And I can say that networking helps in all industries, all of them. I know for sure in education, as somebody who's working at in, in counseling, like I know networking is a, a big deal. I know in the business world, it's a big deal pretty much hospitals even, like everywhere, like networking and having those connections, that good impression is huge when it comes to getting jobs. So yeah, this is, thank you everybody for sharing those um, examples. So networking is a supportive system of sharing information and services. So somebody mentioned that, I think it was Marco with journalism, where you share, like you learn about other services among individuals and groups having a common interest. The exchange of information or services among individuals, groups, or institutions, specifically the cultivation of productive relationships for employment or business. Networking is building relationships before you need them. That's huge. Uh, and networking is cultivating relationships and investing time and effort, establishing and maintaining career-related contacts. So let's talk about that last one. So fostering relationships. So let's say you are right now in community college and you uh are interning like you're low level interning at a company or something and your boss you and your boss have a good relationship like you're networking like you're on good terms but then you go off to the university and you go off to so let's say you go to ucla and you just totally stop talking to that boss like you just don't keep in touch with them you don't let them know what's going on with your life they don't let you know what's going on with their life you kind of just lose that relationship um, you kind of want to avoid that. You want to continue that relationship, like just like a quick email, like, 
or during the holidays, like, hey, how are you doing? Or, hey, I'm visiting town. Do you want to grab lunch? Like, you want to have those relationships and continue working on them. It doesn't mean you have to be, like, constantly, like, in communication with that person. But it's good to just, like, I'll give you an example, like my example. Like, when I was in Lake Tahoe, like, I, I, you all know I, I worked for a child psychologist. I was, like, his intern. And, um, and even though I lived in Berkeley and he was in Tahoe, like we still like, where we were friends, we're friends on Facebook. Like we would catch up, comment on each other's pictures. Like if I was in town, like I would see if he wanted to grab lunch. Like I still chatted with him, even though it was like maybe like once every couple months. So that if I graduated and I wanted to go back to being a, an actual psychologist now, not like a child, like not like an intern, but like a actually hired established psychologist, like I, I probably could, like, I could probably just reach out and be like, Hey, like, are you guys hiring? Like what's going on? And like, I have, um, an advantage over people he has never worked with, if that makes sense, or people that he did work with, but didn't continue that really maintain that relationship. Does that make sense? Or like, even with me, like there's students that are here at the community college and they work with me and then they transfer off. They never chat with me. Like we just lose touch. And then they ask me for a letter of rec down the road. I'm like, uh, I don't remember you. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to write you a letter of rec. Versus if we were like, you know, chatting like every couple, like once a semester, like I would happily write them a letter of rec. I don't know if that makes sense, but just maintaining those relationships is important. Any questions about these bullets? Any examples you want to share? That would be awesome. Any questions? Anybody confused? Anybody disagree with this and think that's dumb or not necessary? <laughs> no, makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Thank you. So based on those different definitions, what, what are common components of networking? What would you say are common components? Mm -hmm. People. Yeah. What about people? Let's see. Who hasn't shared? Carla or Anthony? What do, what did those definitions have in common? Or Tom? Austin? What did they have in common? What theme do you see with those definitions we just read? Connections, mm -hmm. you benefit from the interactions you have with people. Yeah, perfect. Thank you all. Okay, so here's a little cartoon. It says, well, there's another chat. Common, com, 
hunt. Oh, I don't know this word, common. Basically common having component. a mutual friend. Yeah, common components are basically having a mutual friend, is what he's saying, but he didn't space out the components in the R. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. Okay, so I've been thinking about starting a tutoring business. That's a great idea. How to tutor, tutor learning. I've done my homework, built an office. I guess all that's left is to talk to potential clients. Blech. So how's the business going? I realized, uh, I realized I'd be better at something that involves not talking to people. I'm thinking grad school. So yeah, con having connections, like everything that you all mentioned is crucial. Having those connections with people is crucial. Okay, so now we're gonna work on you. How you can, uh, we're gonna work on kind of like creating an elevator speech. So something you can create when you are networking with people. And by networking, this one is in particular professionally, how you can connect with people professionally. So we're, you're going to focus on what's good about you and how others perceive you. I'm going to give you all, what time is it? Perfect. I'm going to give you all 10 to 15 minutes, and then we're all going to share ours. So you're going to, um, you're going to write your name. I usually have students write it in a circle, but you can write it however you want. And then you're going to write three to five traits that best describe you three to five skills that you possess, and three accomplishments that you are most proud of. Um, do you all know the difference between traits and skills? If anybody has questions about what is a trait and what is a skill, um, let us know and we, we can answer that. Um, let's see. Oops. The little chat went away. Oh, there it is, okay. Yes, so a trait is something about your personality. So, um, Think of like a, like a description about you, like a characteristic. And then a skill is something like a, like a talent, something you're good at. Something you've kind of developed. Do, does somebody want to do somebody as an example? Should we all do someone as an example? No, write it. I want you all to do it on a piece of paper. And you can use, I know I asked you all to write traits and skills on your resume. You can use those if you'd like. If you're having trouble thinking about this, ask yourself, what would your parents or guardians say about you? What would your favorite person say about you? Like maybe your best friend, your brother or sister, your sibling, um, your grandpa, grandma, your community, maybe people in your church. How would people in your church describe you? How would people that are fond of you describe you? What traits would they say you have? What skills would they say you have? So I'll give you all, like I said, it's 1035. I'll check in at 1045 to see how y'all are doing. <clears throat> 